Happy Mother's Day once again. Uh, uh, kind of slow coming. You know, our mothers deserve at least one out of a horse, 365 days, deserve to be pampered, honored, and respected, and celebrate what they've done for our lives, right? Right? right. right. Yes, thank you. And our mothers are known for their sacrificial love and their prayers. Don't you agree? Yes. Yeah. So whenever, whenever we celebrate Mother's Day all these years, I felt uneasy about celebrating, be pampered as a mother because I wasn't a good mother. I didn't sacrifice my life for my children. As uh, when they were very little, young, I got divorced because of my excess infidelity, physical abuse, gambling, and drinking habits. Since then, I never looked back. I left Korea for 25 years. I never contacted my kids. So you can imagine the hurt, the resentment that built up. In Korean culture, way back then when, there were no such thing as a shared custody. And rich man gets everything, and still now. And her, their father was uh, very rich. Every time I think about my children, I judge myself. I'm a bad mother. Everybody celebrating Mother's Day, I want to find a place to hide myself because I do not deserve such celebration. One thing I am proud that of myself, what I've done, was every time my heart is aching, every day, every moment, I prayed for my children, for their salvation, their life be in God's hands, God's protection, and God's blessing and anointing. And I didn't want to go and knock on their doors, or write a letter because I was afraid my ex will find me where I am and he's going to come and get me. To make a long story short, about 11 years ago, I was in seminary pursuing my doctorate degree and I met a Korean young pastor who was about a few years older than my son. I always believed that one of these days, God's going to send me my son to seminary. That's what I was thinking all the time. And I, every year I go back to seminary and uh, searching for my son to be there. And this young Korean pastor says, when we got closer together, we share our um, concerns and prayer concerns. And he says, you know what? I can find out where your children are right now. And because if they are young, they might have a home page, social media. And he says, no, no, no. If I was afraid their father was going to find out where I am. But this pastor says that he's going to disguise, um, he's not going to reveal my identity, and he's going to look for my kids. You all know, and some people know. Voila, one week later, he found my daughter's homepage, and is this your daughter? And I looked through, 
And she, since she was very little, she got changed, so I couldn't tell that was my daughter. Um, but I could tell, recognize my son, and their father and grandma, who was a notorious mother-in-law. <laughs> and a chicken skin. I mean, um, and then I learned how she's been growing up, how she's been enjoying her life, and where she lives, and all that. And they were far away from their father. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I made a contact. And I didn't know what to say. Korean language has a different level, right? And uh, your kids, you use this sentence. And if you don't know the person, you use higher sentence, right? So I was talking to my daughter in this level because I never get to know her. And I didn't know, could I say, hey, this is your mom? After 25 years later, but my son, I could do that. And then, so 11 years ago, I went to Korea, right? Before I went to Korea, we were crying. I was crying all day long and all night long. And, you know, when I get, when I get, get to the Korea airport, instead of uh, crying my heart out, first thing I asked them is what? Do you go to church? My daughter still cannot believe I asked that question. Instead of, oh, you know. And their answer was what? No. But, they said, when they were young and growing up and going to school, they went to Christian schools. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all I needed to know. Because when I was married to uh, their father for three years, three, four years, and uh, we never went to church. I was backsliding. So that, therefore, I never took my kids to church. And that was just hunting me. And so, let's go back to church. And uh, I registered them in the uh, church. And to make a long story short, they became Christians. And they were baptized and etc. Praise, Praise the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. And, but... Our new life cannot begin with all, all hurt and grudge against me. I knew that I cannot kill them. That is too deep, too strong. My daughter keeps saying, how could you leave me behind? What did I do wrong? You didn't love me enough to suffer through such abuse. Even though they both understand their father's lifestyle as a grown-up children, they both said that if I were you, I would uh, have made the same decision. And my son especially follow his uh, uh, father, live with uh, five different stepmothers entire his life, 30 years of his life, five different mothers. So he knows. And my daughter knows. But my son was uh, forgiving me easily, but my daughter had a hard time. Every time you remember, every time whenever I need to uh, talk to her, and, and, and we always ended up in an argument. I never know what I did wrong, and she get always hurt and mad, and you know, and I said, <sighs> and my choice was pray to God. Whatever I do will not heal her hurt, deep-seated hurt, and only God can heal. You got to remember this. Only God can heal all those year old years of hurt and resentment building up uh, in your, deep in your mind. So every time I talk to her, you've got to experience God from the inside out. You've got to let God heal you. 
and I've been praying for God to heal my children from the inside out. About four or five years ago, she called me crying like a crazy. And she experienced St. Paul like a conversion. And now her forgiveness is from the bottom of her heart, from the inside out. Now we have a relationship like nobody else has. We are good friends, sisters in Christ. Hallelujah. And whenever I think of uh, uh, our relationship, whatever I've done, hurt, damaged, their hurts, hurt, still we do not ignore that, but we learn to live with it. We learn to move forward with our hurts and our past failures and regrets. And whenever I think of our new life in Christ, and I praise my God that our God hears our prayers. Do you believe our God hears our prayers? Yes. How often do you pray? Every day. Gallup says this. Only 57% of Christians pray every day. Can you imagine? 80, 90% of Christians pray once a week at least when they come to church. But majority of Americans, they pray occasionally because they've heard power of a prayer. As we celebrate Mother's Day, we are going to study about how to lift up effective prayer. We are still on a Sermon on the Mount, and we are Lesson 8, and God, Jesus, is teaching us how to pray. Not what to pray, how to pray. Amen? So, as a mother, especially as a parent, we need to know how to lift up dynamic prayer. It's a pattern for dynamic prayer, our title says. We've got to lift up effective prayer. And if our prayer is effective, then our life will be really in good hands. Amen? Amen. So, I've come up with how to pray dynamic, effective prayer. A pattern for um, dynamic prayer is 2SR, as Jesus teaches us this morning. 2SR. Amen? Now, you're going to have to really awake and help me with this. Now, verse 6, Jesus says, When you pray, what do you do? Go into what? Your room. Verse 6 says, right? Go into your room. Close the door. And then pray in secret. And uh, who, God who is unseen, and when he hears what is done in secret, will reward you. Now, does that mean we can never pray in corporate worship service? No. What does it mean go in your room and shut the door and pray? That's effective prayer. And then uh, what we pray here is not going to be effective. Is he talking about that? I mean, he prayed himself in public, right? In front of his disciples. And his prayer was so long, disciples fall asleep in Gethsemane, right? And he prayed over the meal, last supper. After giving thanks to his father, he broke the bread. And he prayed on a cross. He says what? 
Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. And Roman soldiers even heard his prayer. So how do we reconcile with this uh, instruction? Shut the door and go in your room and pray secretly. Remember the prayer that Jesus praised was uh, what? The, the Pharisees and the tax collectors are praying in the temple. And then Jesus praised whose prayer? Tax collector's prayer, remember? Why was that? Was this tax collector in private room and shut the door? No, he was in public temple, and anybody can walk in. What difference between, what's the difference between the Pharisee's prayer and tax collector's prayer? Tax collector had a broken heart over his sin. He revealed his heart to God. You see? That's the difference. He, it's, Jesus is not talking about secrecy. We're not secret CIA. Jesus is talking about sincerity. Whenever, you know, the last Sunday we learned that the, do, do not let the left hand know what the right hand do. It's not about secrecy. What are you thinking when you write your check? What are you, what is your motivation when you do the good things for God? That is what? Sincerity. Our God wants us to lift up sincere prayers, revealing our hearts to God. Pharisees, they do all the right things but with the wrong motivation, wrong intention, and try to be seen by others. They are more important. They are more spiritual. That is what God's pointing out. You can do that, God says, but you ain't going to get any reward from your heavenly Father. You know, Pharisees, and sometimes we pray like this guy. The guy who was a hotshot lawyer and opened his uh, brand new business. Remember this story? And he was uh, full of excitement, anticipate the customers, uh, the clients walk in uh, any minute in his door. And he heard the footstep and knock on the door. He turned around and he gave his back to the customer who walked in and picked up the phone and talked over the phone. You know, I am so glad that you contacted me and uh, uh, I am swamped with work and I will let my secretary find a spot for you and we will squeeze you in and I'm glad that uh, you are uh, asking me to do, uh, you know, to. Uh, um, uh, represent you and we'll call you back, right? Get your number, hung up. And then turn around and said to the, 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 the one who walked in the door, can I help you? And the one says what? I'm not sure. I am here to fix your phone line. <laughs> You're supposed to laugh like a crazy. <laughs> His phone line wasn't working. He pretended he was so busy, important. You didn't get it. <laughs> In that case, you can pretend you got it and just laugh. <laughs> and Jesus is pointing out, a lot of times we lift up our prayers. Nobody is listening on the other end. If, when.
To ask, or when you try to deceive, when you try to lie to your spouse or your parents, have you ever done that? You are babbling. Hmm? Try to hide some truth. And sometimes we lift our prayers in public, like a worship service. We are babbling about this and that because our true intention is something else, right? Are we praying to God, lifting our prayers to God, or to call myself attention, or pray to people around here, babbling? So Jesus says what? Stop babbling. Restrain yourself from babbling. Then how should we pray without babbling? Hmm? Organized prayer, what do you call that? Systematic prayer. Did you know that? Systematic prayer. Jesus told us this is how you should pray. Our Father who are in heaven, that comes with four Ps. Did you know that? It's a systematic prayer. This is a grown up prayer. And when we, our liturgists, they pray systematic prayer. First of all, Mary did a good job. First of all, all our liturgists does good job, great job in the call to worship. First of all, what do you do? God says, Jesus says what? Praise. Our, God, our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name be glorified and praised. Right? And then, second P is, second P is petition. Right? Give us what? Our daily bread. And then third, pardon. Th third, pardon. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then last one is what? Power. Deliver us from evil. Give us power. That is what? we do. That's what a uh, pattern for dynamic prayer. Jesus taught us to pray. Do restraining yourself from babbling and lift up what? Systematic prayer. 
Now, oh, that's too much. Now, when you are a beginner, you don't have to remember this. You can pour out your heart, pour your heart out to God. That's the bottom line. That's the most important. Even though you do this uh, systematic prayer, the, the restraining yourself uh, from babbling, you still have to have a uh, heart thing going, right? Hey, good job. I'm going to miss you like a crazy. <laughs> and so, now, if you cannot remember all those four Ps, then remember one thing. The, the criteria begin with the systematic prayer is what? Praising God. You know why is that? That is the most important thing that in our lives we got to do. When you praise God, what God has done in your life, that's why I share uh, uh, what God has done in my life. And I'm, I'm going to share more and more after this is Korean drama going here. <laughs> and every week. <laughs> every week, yes. And, and when we think of what God has done in our past, and we can see what God is doing in our present, and we can trust what God will do in our future. And then our petition, whatever we want to request, can be minimized. And also, when we focus on God, then we less focus on our problem. You don't focus on your problem, your problem's gonna be smaller. That's a uh, science. <laughs> right? That's why God said, Jesus says, praise God first. We do backwards. We moan putari about, look at my situation, hear me, solve my financial problems, relationship problems, and my aches and pains, and my hurt, and etc. Forget about praising God, what he has done before. I mean, that's what the Israelites often, they were chosen people, and they start with the monku monku, right? When they were doing monku monku, what does uh, God do? Remember me. I am the Lord God, rescued you, delivered you from the slavery of Egypt. I was the one who parted the Red Sea so that you can walk right through it. Does God do this to brag himself? No. When we remember what God has done in our lives, well, especially when we go dry spell, you know, we remember what God has done. Oh, fills our hearts, lift our hearts up. And uh, looking at our problems, oh, no problem. Our God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. God, there is no nothing our God cannot solve. No sorrows God cannot soothe. No storms God cannot calm. That's the faith. And when we pray with the faith, what? You believe what you, you, you pray when, with the faith, then it will be done. And act as if you received. That faith comes when we give praise to God. You know, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This, uh, this line has deserves a whole six months of uh, a study. But to make a long story short, God does not lead us to temptation. So what does it mean then? You know, James chapter 1 says, uh, 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 no one should say God's tempting me when they are tempted, right? Uh, the temptation comes from what? Evil in our hearts. So what does Jesus mean, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one? And this means, God, do not let Satan lead us to temptation. And God let his own son, led by the Holy Spirit, be tempted in the desert. And Jesus could not 
Jesus could not give in to temptation, but we are not strong enough and deliver us from evil in our hearts and evil ones around us and they're roaring around us to devour. That is what the prayer, power. We need power of God in our lives to not give in to temptation, to live our life worthy of God's sacrifice, being God's children. Amen? So, what does Jesus want us to do? In verses 7 through 15, Jesus says what? Yeah, restraining, restraining from babbling, pray, lift up. When you pray, you pray what? Systematic prayer, right? Systematic prayer is what? Huh? Stop restraining yourself from babbling, Amen. And all mature Christians, they do not babble. They know what God can do. They know what God has done in their lives. They know what they can ask. And they know, even before they ask, God will provide. They do not babble. They do not cheat God. They do not try to hide what their hearts desire. They pour out their hearts. Amen? You know, our prayer is power, life-sustaining line for us. And God extender. And many Christians use prayer life like airbags. When does the airbag explore, implore, employ? Huh? When you are in trouble. And the guy who was a Christian guy was in an ocean and his boat got capsized. Do you say that? And he was about to drown. He was so scared. Nobody's around in the wide ocean. And he started to pray. His heart revealed, and oh God, you are great God, and I know you love me. Please save me. If you save me this time, yes, I will do this, I will do that, and help me. Praise God, you are omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. I know you are here right now. Please, please rescue me. If you rescue me, I won't bother you again another 15 years. Laugh it hard. We do that. I'm not talking about all oh, the meal prayer. I am talking about really deep down heart prayer and systematic prayer. We do not do that unless we get into trouble. And that's what Jesus wants us to correct. Jesus point out, do not pray like a Pharisees, hypocrites to be seen. Nothing in your heart, nothing in your head, just babbling about. You know, when we pray our Father who are in heaven, if when we are not in the body of Christ, we cannot pray our Father. It's my Father, right? Our Father. And if we are not willing to let go, let God, and forgive others, we are hypocrites when we pray, what? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. When I am all for glory for myself, attention for myself, and yet I pray, hallow be thy name, I am such a hypocrite. 
That is what God wants us, our Lord Jesus wants us to examine our hearts and uh, be right with God. And when we learn to pray, prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, whenever you pray, think about it. When we know how to lift up dynamic prayers, oh, God's going to bless our sacks off. Amen? So how do we do? What does Jesus teach us to pray? When you pray, Jesus says, you should pray, what? Sincere prayers, revealing your heart. And say systematic prayer that restraining from yourself, babbling. Got it? Got it? That's when what? God's going to bless our socks off. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you. As we celebrate Mother's Day, help us, our mothers, to pray, lift up our prayers. Very effective. We've learned dynamic pattern for prayers. Oh God, bestow upon us, give us wisdom, give us power.